For this video, what I want to do is show you how to make a decision in a hypothesis test using the p-value. So in order to make the decision, it's really important that you first know what a p-value is. And the p-value just stands for the probability value. Basically, what this is telling you is how likely you are to get the sample statistic um, that you got if the null hypothesis were actually true. So it's just telling you how likely it is that that sample would occur just by chance alone. So then what we do after we find the p-value, and in this um, video I will not show you how to find the p-values, I'm just going to talk about how to make the decision. Okay, so to make your decision, what you're going to do is you're going to compare your p-value to your level of significance alpha. Okay, so alpha is always going to be determined before you start the hypothesis test. The most commonly used alpha level is 5% or 0 0.05. Um, the other ones that are used often are 10% and 1%. Okay, but this has to be made, this decision of your alpha level has to be made before you run the test because if you don't decide beforehand, after you get your results, if you change your alpha level, then that's making it make the decision you want it to make, which is, an, is not an ethical practice in statistics. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to look at our p-value, and I just labeled it as p here. You could write p-value, it's the same thing. If p-value is less than or equal to alpha, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis. If my p-value is greater than alpha, then I'm going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So basically what's happening here is my alpha level is that threshold for where I decide that the um, sample statistics are considered unusual. So if it's less than or equal to alpha, then that means that it's more unusual than I would like it to be just to happen by chance alone. So most likely the null hypothesis is not going to be true. So we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, if my p-value is greater than alpha, again, we fail to reject because this means that it's very likely or much more likely anyway for it to happen by chance alone. Okay, so I have a couple of examples down here. The first one that I have is make a decision using the p-value. So the p-value that is given to me is 0 0.0752. So remember what we're going to do is we're going to compare our p-value to our given alpha level. Okay, so for the um, first one, it is given to us as a percent, and we always want to convert our percent into decimals. So as a decimal, this would be 0 0.10. So I always write the p-value first because it just makes it easier using the decision rules. So I would say 0 0.0752, and then I'm going to compare it to alpha. So I'm going to ask myself, is this less than, is it equal to, or is it greater than? Okay, so 0 0.0752 is less than 0.10, which means that we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so if we had decided at the beginning that our level of significance were 10%, then we would reject the null hypothesis. For the second one, we're going to compare, we're going to do the same thing, 0 0.05. It's already written in decimal form, so I don't have to convert it from a percent to a decimal. And I started to write the alpha first. Let me switch that. Let me write the p-value first. So we're gonna take the 0 0.0752 and we're gonna compare it to our alpha level. And on this one, we have that 0 0.0752 is greater than 0 0.07 or 0 0.05. So since it's greater than, we fail to reject it's above the threshold of what we would consider to be unusual. So in this case, we would fail to reject. And the reason that I did it this way in the example is so you can see the importance of using, coming up with your alpha, your alpha values or level of significance before you make your decision. Because if you have different alpha levels, but the same p-value, you can make completely different decisions. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want you to pause the video.
and try this question on your own. So go ahead and pause the vi video and you try the p-value is 0 0.0237 and decide whether you're going to reject or fail to reject. As soon as you have come up with your conclusion, go ahead and hit play to make sure that you made the correct decision. All right, so to compare your answer to mine, let's look at our values. Again, we're comparing our p-value, 0.0237, to our alpha, 0 0.01, okay? So if we look at this, 0 0.0237 is greater than 0 0.01, and anytime it is greater than, that means that we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So if you made the decision to fail to reject, then you made the correct decision. All right, so for the next one, remember that you do have to take the 5% and convert it to a decimal. So we would take our p-value of 0 0.0237 and compare it to 0 0.05. And for this one, we can see that it is less than or equal to. And on the last one, I didn't write the equals to. If it's less than or equal to, then you are going to reject the null hypothesis. So hopefully this video helps you to be able to understand how to make your decision based on p-values and maybe a little bit more about what a p-value is. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.